it's in Australia and when you look at it from Google okay it's it's it you can see it laid out on the ground it's 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 a hexagon in a hexagon in a hexagon and we know that the hexagon is really a two-dimensional version of a three-dimensional cube but what's interesting is right in the middle of that is a thing that's called harp and most of you know what that is I don't think it's what people assume it is I'll explain it here in a second so you got harp which is an array of antennas yeah and so those tennis people are blaming all kinds of weather phenomena and stuff. I don't, I don't believe that. I think this is being done on a much higher level than HARP. Um, but so you have, you have the Kabbalistic cube and a cube and a cube. And three cubes is three, three. That's three times three or three squared. So you got three squares, right? That equals nine. And nine is the occultic number for Saturn. Okay, but what's interesting is, is that the place where this is sitting, yeah? Uh, this is the name of it. You ready? If you're sitting down, stand up. If you're standing up, sit down. Um, it's called X E X M O U T H. X mouth. X mouth. But let's 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 break the word down. X mouth. It doesn't matter. You can leave the E or take the E off. So you have X, just the letter X, yeah? Dash, and then we have mouth. X mouth. X represents the planet Saturn, and mouth is something that you speak with. And then you have the array of antennas called harp. Now, this is, you know, this is another, an, another play with letters. What they did is they did like the same thing with Google, which is really Gog L, which is uh, uh, Global Occult Government, dot E-L. Well, harp is H-A-R-P, but in reality, it's H-A-R-P, like the harp that you strum, because what does a harp do? A harp creates noise, how? Through tone, which is vibration. So we have X mouth. It's, it's, it's a speaking point for Saturn, X mouth. And right after this video, I'll put it on there so you can see it for yourself, and I outlined it, outlined it in different colors. So you've got X mouth. All right, so it's a speaking point. It's communication. It's a it's a it's a communication uh, uh, door a, a doorway. It's a communication to the planet Saturn. That's what it's saying. You know, which brings me you know, which brings me to something else. You know, um, I always try and look into the Bible first. I was raised a Lutheran, and I you know I believe in Jesus Christ, but I do believe, and I know since I was a little kid, what got me started in all of this is. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane before they came to take him to have him crucified, uh, they, the disciples, were falling asleep and Jesus was getting pissed and getting pissed. And, uh, you know, he told them, he said, Listen, you guys, you, you got to wake up because they're coming to get me and pretty soon I'm going to be gone. And so he said, Listen, and, and as he explained through the night, he said, There's many other things I'd like to tell you, but you couldn't understand them. Okay? or to bear them. And I remember as a little kid asking, you know, pastors and teachers, you know, what was it that Jesus, you know, was trying to say? And nobody could answer it, or they wouldn't answer it. And, you know, it was at that point as a small kid that I, I started to formulate in my head that Jesus was saying more in the Bible than what people were picking up on. In other words, you know, the innuendos, read between the lines type of stuff. Now, I had a real rough childhood, and so I'm just going to give you a little bit of history on how I got on this whole timeline thing. And my mom, my mom, my mom was real violent when I was a kid, and you know she she had uh, a way of drinking too much, and I remember one time when she beat the shit out of me when I was a little kid. I remember I was five years old, and I remember she told me that the reason that she had problems when she was a kid was because of me. Now at five years old, I already knew that the timeline was wrong, and I told her. I said, "Well, wait a minute. You were here before I was." But see, maybe this is what planted all this in my head. I didn't know anything about the Saturn, the Saturn alien thing, but I did know about time. Okay, so let's let's go jump back into the Bible for a minute. So we already know that there's a harp, a harp establishment in a place called Exmouth, which is a connection between Saturn and harp. Okay, let's go back and look at the story of Noah. Okay, the story of Noah. You know, the story goes, you've all heard it, I'm sure. So God told Noah, look, build an ark, you know, because I'm going to flood the world. 
there was no really no rain before that because the ozone was thicker, it was misty, uh, people didn't know of rain. I'm not so sure that this was even really a, a flood like what they think. Because what I'm about to tell you, it just doesn't make sense. It was some kind of a calamity. That I'm sure that there was, because this is not the first time the world's been around. Because God told Adam and Eve to, to, to be fruitful and replenish the earth. And if you jump, jump into the book of John, it says, you know, they use the word tohu babohu, which is the world was, the world was made void, and the world was made again. Okay? So there we know at least on two different occasions that the, you know, well, the book of Ecclesiastics, a time to build up, a time to tear down. Well, that's Saturnalian. You know, in the occult, Saturn always destroys what he creates and re re recreates it. So uh, that aside, so let's say that this all went down, that God told Noah, look, you're the good guy on, this, on here, everybody else is wicked. I'm going to wipe them all out. But I'm going to give them a chance to repent. So while you're building this boat, you go and tell them, look, there's something big coming, right? So the story goes on, everybody laughs at him, they think he's a nut. And plus, he was a drinker. He would def we definitely know that because the story goes on to say that his son saw him naked and they were cursed and blah, blah, whatever. Okay, so the guy enjoyed a couple of beers. Who doesn't? So what happens is, so it rains and it kills all the people in the world. Okay, for 40 days and 40 nights it rains, it floods. You know, it's supposed to wipe out these things called the Nephilim and all the evil people. Um, but it clearly states at the end of the story that there was, some of the Nephilim survived. Okay, and the, the one particularly that survived was called Og. Well, his name is spelled O-G. Incidentally, this is why you have that name on the street for the original gangsters because the Nephilim are the OG, the original gangsters. But those creeps at the top like to incorporate this in and make it fashionable. That's what OG is. That goes back to the Nephilim, the troublemakers, the original gangsters. Okay? So now you know what that, where, that, where that comes from. But so let's say that the story is true and so all of a sudden now, the whole world's wiped out, and now the ark winds up on Mount Ararat. If it really is even a mountain, it, it just means a high place, yeah? You know, it, one other thing, it's interesting, because you've all seen the, the uh, model of, of Noah's ark. It looks like a regular boat. But if you go and you read the story of the, of the, the version of Gilgamesh, the ark was a cube. If I got to take my choice, I, I'd probably say it was pretty much a cube, considering everything else in the freaking Bible is. Okay, um, so whatever this thing is that they're in lands, okay, and then they get out, and the world starts all over again. Well, this story cannot be true, not in the way that it's told, because it isn't like one of his sons got out and said, "Hey, I'm going to change my name to Giuseppe and become, you know, and, and become Italian and start making pizzas." Where did all the, where did all the pizzas go? Twink, be quiet. That was Twink chiming in. Where did all the people go? And where did all the, where, you know, we should all literally be speaking Hebrew, which is ancient Phoenician. Where did all the other races come from? I understand that languages break down and they change. Where did all the other people come from? Where did the black man come from? Where did the Chinese man come from? Where did the Indian come from? Where did the, you know, the, 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 the Asians come from? The story could not have happened the way it's saying. The story, the story is just a story of some calamity, but it could not have been in the fashion that it says because we would all be speaking Phoenician. Okay? So then you've got the Tower of Babel. Okay? The Tower of Babel. Um, what is the Tower of Babel? Well, the word Bab means doorway. L means Saturn. So it was a doorway to Saturn. Well, maybe Harp is the Tower of Babel. It's the doorway. It's an opening. You know, when they talk about the Tower of Babel, it wasn't an actual building. It was communication. Word. Listen to the, listen to the very beginning of the Bible. In the, in, the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. But the Word is not God. The Word, the sound, the tone. It's the tone. It's the vibra vib vibration. It's the vibration. So we, have, we had a bunch of people conglomerated together that understood how the system worked, that we don't know how to date, but science is, is doing this behind the scenes, which is probably what Harp is. And they were all trying to get together, and the real creator came down and said, Hey, F this. No, no, this ain't going to happen. You know, you ain't going to trump me. I'm the creator. And so that's where, that's where the different languages came from. But 
we should have at least up until that point all been speaking Phoenician. Or he or that's what the Hebrews speak. So the Tower of Babel, that I believe. The flood I don't believe because it doesn't it doesn't make it make sense. First of all, you would have had to say that all of all of civilization had to be crushed into one small area for him to get the word out to everybody. Okay? The world was different back back in those days. You know, the continents were not shaped the same. So this story, the story is it's coded. It's telling you that something major happened, but I don't believe it was a flood like water, even though this world has been destroyed and created numerous times. Okay? We are not the first ones to be here. Civilizations go up and civilizations go down. That's what the pyramids are. The pyramids are directly connected with Saturn because the Saturn on the top of North Pole is a perfect hexagon. And that hexagon creates a cube. And that cube is what creates the, the Kabbalistic tree of life. But it also, it's a time cube. When that, thing, when that thing spins and gets in certain positions against other planets, okay, that sets up, they have a playbook for this stuff. I've never seen it. I'm just saying they have a playbook, and this is why wars are started, and this is why depressions come, and this is, it's just the way the system works. You know? The, 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 the Kabbalistic Jews, you know, worship two deities, basically. The first one is Saturn. The second one is the moon, because Saturn and the moon always work in conjunction with each other. You know? They, they always work in conjunction with each other, without, without exception. Okay? I talked to a guy one time, I'm not going to say his name because it's not privy for me to say, but you know, he told me, he says, here's how it works. At least he gave me a little bit. He says, it goes from the center of Saturn through the center of the moon and down through the center of the earth. Okay, well, that seems like simple geometry to me. So we're talking about angles. Okay, what are angles? Angles are degrees. Okay, I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know how it works. We never went any farther with it and I don't really think that I need to know how it works. Um, but getting back to this thing with harp, what, you know, when you get done with this, when you get done listening to or watching me here, I'll put it on here and you can see it for yourself. So I need to go find out where these other harps, you know, places are at and look at the names of them because it's just not a coincidence. You know, as, as I like to say, at some point it stops being a coincidence and becomes evidence. So it, it's, it's highly unlikely that they would build it at a place called Exmouth make this giant array of antennas which create tones and vibrations and then name it after a doorway to Saturn. It's, it's, it ain't happening, believe me. The other thing I wanted to bring up uh, before I end this is I know that a lot of people think that the chemtrails are there to poison you and kill you. Um, a lot of it is aluminum that they're spraying. Uh, and of course, everything, everything has a byproduct that creates either good or bad. Of course, if you start spraying fucking, excuse my language, aluminum into the atmosphere, you're going to get some kind of, you know, blowback from it that ain't good for the environment. But I don't think that is why they're doing it. If you've ever messed around with radios, you'll understand if you've ever, if you've ever been driving in your car and you're, and you're driving and you turn on a radio station and all of a sudden it gets weaker and weaker and farther and farther. It's because the signal's dropping off because FM which is frequency modulation, when it comes off the tower, it goes in a straight line, yeah? And so as it goes out, it starts dropping off because a radio wave has mass. It, 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 okay, it starts dropping off and eventually you get farther out than the radio wave is, okay? AM, which is ampli amplitude modulation, goes up and hits the ionosphere and bounces down, okay? And there's a whole art to doing that where these guys can talk on the other side of the world uh, with, with two watts of power, which isn't much for traveling that distance. But, it, and it's my personal belief that the reason that they're spraying this crap all over the planet is because when you put the aluminum in the air, which is what most antennas are made out of, okay, they're not made out of gold and they're not made out of brass, they're made out of aluminum. If you spray enough of the shit in the air, then the whole planet becomes a big ass antenna. And whatever's being sent back and forth from there or whatever, we don't have to wait for certain conditions. See, because when you, when you work with ham radio, um, there's things that interfere with that, sun flares and all kinds of other things that will, will increase the, the, the uh, radio wave's distance or greatly decrease it. So if we make the whole planet an antenna, an antenna through the air, 
we don't have to worry about that stuff because no matter where we transmit, it's going to go into the bigger antenna, which is now in, into the atmosphere of the Earth, and that information will get through. That's what I think is what, what they're spraying the aluminum for. Okay? So you have Bab L, doorway to Saturn. It's an antenna. Okay? What do you do with antennas? You talk, you speak. Same thing as the Tower of Babel. It's trying to communicate with that thing. That's my opinion. When you look at it, you see the Kabbalistic three cubes, you know, and when you see 33, that's just a designation for three squared or three times three equals nine, and nine is the number of Saturn. So yeah, this is not by accident, this stuff. So I'm just going to end it up, wrap it up with that. Um, you know, I know that there was, this, this world's had many calamities, but, you know, it, it, the, the story of Noah does not make any sense. First of all, how would he have got around the world to tell everybody, number two, when they got off? You know, yes, languages break down, but, you know, just because a language breaks down doesn't mean a guy goes from being white to being black or being, you know, uh, Jewish be to becoming Chinese. You know, they've manipulated stories. They, that's why it's called the King James Authorized Version. Because the real story, they can't tell you, see? They, because it was all based on keeping you an effing idiot for the rest of your life. Religion means to tie down, restrain, or hold back. It has nothing to do with spirituality. You are. You're spiritual. That book has some great stuff in it, but it's a book of high physics. It, with the exception of Jesus Christ, that part I believe because he's the only guy ever to stand up against this, uh, the establishment. Aside from that, it's a lot of innuendos. It's coded. Um, it's, it's biased. The Old Testament is Semitic. There's 13 races of Semites on the planet. Um, and then you've got the New Testament, which is, which is written by the Vatican's and the Masons. King James, whom the book is named after, was openly a Mason. Well, I don't know if you know much about those guys, but they have an agenda. Okay? So let's just leave it at that. Let's just concentrate on the fact that there's a place called Exmouth, E-X-M-O-U-T-H, in Australia that's a harp, uh, that is a harp establishment that is sending information, in my opinion, uh, it makes sense with everything that's going on. And so just go ahead and look at these pictures and we'll just leave it at that for today. Thanks. Uh, real quick, I had ended the film, but I wanted to put this in real quick. Uh, in the book of Revelations, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the coming of man, which is basically stating, just like it was in the days of Noah, where men were eating and drinking and marrying and carrying on regular business, uh, so will it be in the end times. In other words, just before the calamity happened, everything was exactly the same. Okay? Everything was the same. People were doing business and bang, something major happened. Um, so it goes on to say, you know, farther on it says, and men will faint from fear of things to come. There's something they're not telling us. It's tied to that planet. I don't know what it is. You know, this thing, let me, let me clarify this. Uh, Planet X is planet Saturn. X represents Saturn because it's the oldest symbol in the world for that planet. The X is the seal of Saturn. They just change it a little bit and overlap it. Okay? N Nibiru is not a planet. Nibiru is a point on the moon. Okay? Nibiru is a point on the moon. It's a lunar point. The Saturn works in conjunction with the moon. You, go to, you can go look at any Jewish we website and you'll see they sh they'll show Saturn, then they'll show the moon, and then they'll show the earth. Okay? I, I remember one that was just, it was absolutely fabulous the way they did it. You, it started out, you flew through Saturn, you flew through the moon, and you flew right through the earth. Just like that guy told me how it works. Nibiru is a point on the moon. Saturn is planet X. Planet X is the destroyer. It's already here. That's why things are going so badly. Because there's a there's a timetable that the men that have the ancient playbook basically know when these things are in certain positions. Certain things have to happen. That's why I keep telling you this banking scandal is really a scandal because it doesn't exist. They're pulling the money back and saying, oh, there's just all these troubles. There are no fucking problems. It's all based off of a playbook that goes back thousands of years. It's how they control the populations. You know, let me just get back to this real quick. What happened to all of those people? 
where did these people go that supposedly perished? You know? It's a, it's a scary thought. What's up there on Saturn that's so freaking important? That, that we have to keep in communication with it. That we have to name all of our products after it. That we have to have it on all of our logos. That it has to be in our songs. That it has to be on our military weapons. I mean, it, it clearly says in Genesis that, that the fallen angels are the ones that taught women the art form of divination. How to speak with familiar spirits. And they're the ones that taught man how to make war. So Jesus said, I'm not the ruler of this world. I come from another place. So well, then that just leaves Saturn or Satan. Okay? But the God of the Old Testament is Yahweh, and Yahweh and Yahoo are the same dude. Interesting. Remember the video I did? Yahoo on the PC? Always wants a blood sacrifice. Well, what does he want a blood sacrifice for? He, if he, why, why does he need that? I only can come up with one conclusion. Because in Christianity, the soul is it, it's it's your spirit yeah and when you die that spirit exits and it goes on it goes on to either uh hell or heaven um but in a lot of religions that's not the case in a lot of religions your blood is your soul because it is the life force okay and there's been numerous numerous religions that have to do with the drinking of blood okay now this even gets weirder because when you get into revelations it says the beheading of the christians and it says that the blood will, will be at the, the, the height of a horse's neck you know i mean i don't want to get too weirded out on this because it's even scary for me to think about you know but blood is an energy it's it's a force you know that's why that's why this whole thing is is very very bizarre um do they need us for something? Is there something that needs our blood? You know these these you know these these FEMA camps with these coffins that'll hold four people. You know what is that? What are those coffins? I mean, why would they actually put you in that to bury you in that? All they got to do is like they did in World War II. They dig a big ass hole and they throw your body in it. They don't pack you nicely in these things that'll hold four bodies to put you in the ground. Sounds more like a shipping crate to me. I don't know. I'm just saying. If you're going to commit mass murder, you're not going to worry about giving last rites. You're just going to kill them, throw them in a big asshole, and bury them. But if you had to send them somewhere, well, then you have to have a container. I don't know, man. I don't want to weird you out. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, basically. There's something going on here, real big. The story of Moses or Noah and all of those, all of those. Uh, people that disappeared it doesn't make sense FEMA is not going to spend money to contain people you know if this if there's going to be this mass calamity it ain't going to happen go watch any Holocaust video and you'll see the tractors pushing the dead bodies into big holes and then burying it they didn't put them in caskets and then send them home you know which brings me to my next point I know this video is getting long, but let's just think for a minute. The word Holocaust is all, always assumed to be a big, mass, terrible, whatever. But that's not what it really means. It, the first time it's used, it's used in, 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 in the Bible when, uh, I believe it's in Genesis, where God told Cain and Abel to bring their Holocaust unto the Lord. Okay? Cain and Abel had to bring their Holocaust unto the Lord. A holocaust, if you go look at the definition, is a burnt sacrifice or offering. So now we know that it's at least it's an offering, and it's supposed to be a burnt offering. Okay, so it's a sacrifice. You're taking a life and you're giving to that thing. Okay? Um, what really happened in those war camps? I mean, what aren't they telling us? What really went down? I really don't think that the Jews and the Nazis are enemies. I really don't. I think... I, I, I've read enough of Phoenician history to know that they believe that the that the earth requires a payment um, of, of blood okay the Jews speak ancient Phoenician there is no Hebrew language so the earth requires a sacrifice it requires blood to even things out because the earth gives and so paganistically they would give back by bloodshed that's why you see this bloodshed going on 
uh, all over the world in the olden days in every religion, including the Hebrew, you know, the uh, Aztecs, the Mayans, the Toltecs. Um, you know, it, because, you know, it, the blood is a life force. So what really went on in those war camps? Because it makes me wonder, because, you know, Saturn's color is black, yeah? That's, that's in mythology, his color is black. He's the god of authority. That's why all religious and, and legal authorities, judges, cops, rabbis, priests, um, SWAT teams, um, CIA, FBI, they all wear black because it represents the god of authority, which is Saturn. So you got this Nazi, this Nazi bastard, yeah, who, who represents the planet Saturn, got these poor, these poor immigrants locked in here, and what are they doing? They're burning them up. I mean, that's all that we know that they were doing. They could have been doing a lot of other things, and I'm sure they will. And so they're burning them up, and, the, and, and but it's the Jews that are calling it a holocaust. And that word, holocaust, didn't become a phrase until, I think, 1956. The war ended in 45. So the Jews are calling it a holocaust, knowing damn well what the word holocaust means. The Gentile wouldn't know what that means. The Gentile always associates it with a big, terrible doodah or whatever. But the Jew knows that it means a burnt offering or sacrifice. Okay? Now, now Hitler made him wear a yellow star armband. Well, what the, what's the yellow star? Saturn is called the, the black sun, the dark star. But in uh, astrology, not astronomy, or I mean astronomy, not astrology, Saturn is called the yellow planet. So here you have a guy who's in the order of the black sun, which is Saturn, taking these people and sacrificing them to the dark star, which is Saturn, wearing a yellow star, which represents Saturn. See, there's something, see, and then, and then the people that, that scream, look at what they did to us, are the ones that call it a holocaust, but they know what the word holocaust is. But they don't explain it to the Gentiles, see, because we're goyim, see, they call us... They call us goyim. It means cattle. Which even that word is scary in itself. You have all these people that disappear, and they tell you it's a flood. Yeah, you got all these people that disappear, and they say it's a flood. But what is it? What we don't know. We don't really know what happens. But they're calling them cattle. Yeah. Well, are they calling us cattle because we're stupid, or are they calling us cattle because we're a food source? You know. I mean, all of this. It, it's it's all weird. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of man. What is coming? What, what is coming? Why are they calling it a holocaust? Where did these people go? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you, there's a big part of this puzzle that they ain't told us, but I guarantee you, that ball, or whatever that is, is what's behind all of this. This is something that's very ancient and been very, very well hidden. All right, that's, it all. that's all I'm talking I'm going to do.